what's up guys welcome to my youtube channel i don't know what this is about but i'm gonna buy a damn cave van all right i've been wanting a cave van for like forever not forever probably like some couple of months it's not even a van at first i wanted a truck sorry if i'm recording weird i don't know how to vlog all right i'm about to show you guys i was looking i want to go look at one yesterday i'll show you guys what was it it was a Suzuki, I think. But I want to go look at it. He wanted 6.5K. It's like a dealer in or not Oregon, um, in Clackamas, Happy Valley, whatever. But I want to go look at it. And it was too rusty. The like, rust was pretty bad. And I just left without even buying it or making him an offer. So I'll show you guys it right here. So this is the van I want to go look at yesterday. The Every. It looked pretty good condition, right? I did see this at the beginning, but that's not even where the rust was bad. It was up front. Like you see, nice, clean little van. Nice interior. Whoopsie. But yeah, they didn't post any detailed pictures about the rust. The rust was really bad around here. And you see all those things it doesn't look as bad in the pictures because obviously it's pictures. Also, over here, on the edges right here, and inside. I don't know. If you guys know about these vans or, like, seen them in person, you'll see that, like, it caves in there. And the rust was really bad there. So I was like, ah, I don't want to pay too much money to even fix all that because I don't even know if it's fixable. But doing research online, I found this website right here. This is what it's called. And I found this one. So this is the price, 3850 And of course, I'm gonna get all of this. And then it comes out to five grand. And it has power steering. Most of them don't even have power steering, so. And I, I actually like this. I like the color as well. Well, it doesn't look like there's any rust because it's pictures, right? So yeah, this is it. Tinted windows already. I plan on tinting them myself. Like the interior, interior looks clean. I'll probably clean it more. And I do see over here it's really like oxidized or something. I already plan on painting those as well for those restoring these things over here. But yeah, this is, I think this is the one if I could find some of these that fit, that's gonna be so sick. I wanna I wanna add these on the van. Can you guys imagine that? <laughs> A damn K van with these rims. That's gonna look so freaking cool. Damn, I'm hyped. I don't know. Five grand is a lot of money, but paying five grand for that, I'd rather pay it and then this shit box. Like if you guys seen this in person, you guys would be like, yo, this shit is too rusty. So this is the van I was just showing you guys on my iPad. I didn't know I had this video in my photo album, but I found it. And you can see the interior, it's all right. To be honest, it's in better condition than mine. Just the door panels, the seats, not so much, but the exterior on mine is way better because it doesn't have much rust. I just went to the bank. I sent the money. I don't know when I'm going to be able to pick it up. I'll just keep you guys updated if they, whatever they send, the email or when I'm gonna be able to pick it up. Yeah, I haven't recorded since the last time I recorded, which was the day I paid for the minivan. The company that sold me the minivan, they, they provided me with the broker. It was really bad timing too, because when you import a vehicle from Japan or from anywhere else, you have to turn in an ISF form. And if you turn in an ISF form late or don't turn one in at all, then they fine you. And the fine is $5,000 up to $10,000. And that day I needed to turn one in, which was May 30th. And May 30th was Memorial Day. So I was stressing out. I was so scared because I didn't know how to turn in an ISF form. I didn't know where to get an ISF form. I was emailing the brokers. I was calling the brokers. And they didn't pick up because Memorial Day, they were closed. They didn't work. So I went online and I found an ISF form. The website I use is importersecurityfiling.com. 
I only chose them because they had a late fee protection. I paid $140. So once I turned that in, I was kind of like relieved. I was worried about getting fined. After I completed everything, then the shipping company sent me something through mail, which was an invoice and the export certificate. All the paperwork I needed to take to the port. They told me that the vehicle was going to arrive June 15th. It's June 9th right now. So in six days, it's going to it's gonna get to the U.S. But I can't pick it up on that same day because customs needs to clear it and all that. So once that is all cleared, I could go pick it up. He said it will be around two days after it gets here. So yeah, that's just a little update. And I guess the next clip is going to be when I go pick the van up. For now, I just need to go look at rentals to go rent. I need a truck and a trailer. I'm going to go look at prices. It's time to go pick my K-Van up. I'm about to go pick up my girlfriend. Got a little jump start in my backpack. Bro, we're about to go rent a truck and a trailer because i didn't even go look at him when i said i was going to but yeah i'm about to go peace we're at the pier so I didn't run a truck, I only rented a trailer twice. I'm an idiot, I'll explain later. But as you can see, the trailer is way too wide and the cave-in is really like tiny and skinny. So on the next clip, you're gonna see the van on someone else's trailer. They're gonna use their trailer to go onto our trailer to just drive the cave-in off onto the trailer. Sorry for saying trailer way too much, but the ramps are way too far away from the cave-in's tire. So right here, He's just gonna back up onto our trailer and put their trailer ends on top of our trailer ends. The tires were like on the edge almost and that's the only reason we did not drive it onto the trailer with the ramps because they thought it would like fall off trying to go up it so they helped us. So right here we're just gonna strap the tires down. They did everything. I offered them money but he just wanted a review on his website. He imports and sells cars. He was picking up two R33s, one GTST and a GTR. So I'll leave their info in the description. Go check them out. So this is a van up close. I didn't get a record at the port because I was too awkward, but I came to my dad's job because it was really close to the DMV I was at. This day I want to go register and get a place for it. And I brought it here to test with the rims that I got for it. That'll be in the next video. So stay tuned. <music> This clip right here is me recording the interior of the van and it's at a different location so that's why I jumped from my dad's job to here. So yeah this is just me showing the inside and me putting down the seats all the way flat just showing you how it's done. <music>
So this is where you put in the engine oil and the car jack, but they gave me the wrong car jack, so the car jack doesn't fit inside of there. And on the other side, this is where the coolant and the windshield wiper fluid go. So this is my dad's boss driving the minivan. When I first got to the shop, the first thing you did was just go inside of the minivan, turn it on and go for a spin. <music> Alright, so I'm gonna explain real quick my video's title of not going as planned. So when I wanna go rent a trailer, I rented out the wrong trailer. So I had to go return it. I couldn't get my money back, but it's alright, it was only $41. I wanna go rent out the trailer that was meant for vehicles. I went, I paid $61. We went to the port and then the port was closed. We got there when the port was closed, yo. Can you believe that? We took so much time looking for a trailer that we got there late. So I called to my uncle. I asked if we could sleep over at his house. He said, yes, we went there. And when I tried to park the trailer, it didn't fit in his damn parking spot. So he called up a friend if we could leave the trailer over at his house for a night. He said, yes, we took it. Next morning around like 6 a.m. We got ready, packed everything we brought, we ate and headed for the trailer. We couldn't even put the trailer on because we didn't know how to connect it to the truck. But once we got it, we went to the port. When we got to the port, the van's ignition didn't turn. So we waited a really long time there for them to try to turn it on until they got a mechanic. They got the mechanic to turn it on. And then we couldn't load the damn van. Thankfully, there was some guy there that offered help because if he wasn't there, I have no idea how I would bring it home. But yeah, you guys saw how we loaded it up. I didn't expect anything to turn out like this, but it did. But thankfully the van is here and it runs good for now. <laughs> I hope nothing breaks on it, but yeah, that's it. I'm gonna break down the total cost of everything. So the ISF form was $140. The broker was 1400. I don't know if I got scammed. I don't know how much brokers are, but that for some reason, it just seems like it's so much damn money for a broker. And then the van itself was $4,870, including shipping and insurance. So the total I spent was $6,410. That's a lot of money, bro. You could like, you could buy a nice car with that. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, sorry to pause the video, but bro, why is my eyeball like that? What the hell? Give it a thumbs up. Comment down what I should work on and do better on because this is my first ever time recording something for a youtube video and editing so that's why the editing was so ass in this it was like i'll just cut up clips and put it together so i don't know how to edit i'll probably get better in the future but yeah peace